Hey everyone and welcome back to another Warcraft video. Okay, so I'm back. Most of the egregious bugs in 8.3 have been fixed and I think we're now actually getting a patch experience that is far more in line with what the developers actually would have intended. And you know, I've been playing it and I've actually been personally having a lot of fun doing visions and stuff with my friends. Today though, we've got a lot to cover. We've got to talk about the fixes, what the gameplay experience is now like, my revised thoughts on who the patch is actually worth playing for, plus uh, big props to the hardworking support staff over there. First though, I do want to make a statement on the purpose of this channel and my outlook. It seems like there has been quite a deal of confusion there on it. Don't worry, this won't take too long. First and foremost, I advocate for the consumer across both of our channels. Loving Warcraft does actually come second to that for me. I'm not going to violate my morals by making a special case for a game that, yes, I do definitely have a special spot for, but ultimately I have to have my principles. I'm in a position of influence here in YouTube, and I think the good moral thing to do is to be honest, especially when, at the end of the day, we are people who are dealing with a product that we purchase. So I'm not going to gloss over problems to make World of Warcraft look better, even though it is in my business interests to actually do so. You know, I choose to approach things from a neutral position and then to be maximally honest about them and then to do a spicy title. Uh, you know, when I see good, I say so. When I see bad, I say so. I'm not going to tone things down to diminish Blizzard's victories. I'm not going to gloss over bad things to save the reputation and I will not try to negate people's experiences. I always foster a skepticism as the corporate machine that rubber stamped much of the bad stuff we've seen, you know, in the last year especially. It ultimately wants you and me to be useful idiots. Have you you know what the concept of a useful idiot is? You know what I mean? If you don't, you know, look it up. I would say that the rise of commercial culture is something that is ripe for exploitation and it's, you know, almost always happening on an emotional level and it's using that to bypass logic so that, you know, the big companies can just get what they want out of you. And that's something I'm always going to be vigilant against. Next up, in regards to the QA department stuff, especially what I said in the last video, yes, they were impacted by the main 2019 layoffs, but let's just say it has been a tough time at Blizzard in the period since then. And I don't want to get anyone in trouble with what I say here. I tried to be quite wink, wink, nudge, nudge in the last video, but uh, you know, I'll make it very clear here. After the layoffs, I heard from a bunch of people, right? And uh, that was throughout 2019. Uh, you know that Jason Schreier article on the canceled StarCraft shooter? I mean, that is something that I knew about weeks in advance. Uh, now, other than things being quite tough, I actually don't know that much about the WoW team's current progress on something like Shadowlands. Uh, you know, I know it's tough. They're, you know, the schedule's pretty rough for them, uh, but there's nothing newsworthy that I can say there. So suffice to say, times are hard. The staff there, I do believe, are doing their, their best. And right now, I think they've been dealt a real tough hand by powers they can't control. Now, how much you believe what I say, that's totally up to you. Uh, that said, I mean, if you are going around saying that the whole QA department was nuked, uh, you know, that's just not true. So. TLDR, they could use a bit more QA, and core development is, uh, you know, dealing with a tough time in terms of schedule. 8.3.5 was planned. We actually know that from data mined info that would suggest it. So, you know, that cancellation is further proof. Look, accept reality and deal with it. That is how I operate. And then finally, when I say Activision Blizzard, some people have thought that, that it's a sort of dog whistle. Uh, no, Activision Blizzard is the parent company. Activision Publishing, King, and Blizzard Entertainment are business units of Activision. Activision Blizzard overall. So when I say Activision Blizzard, that is me referring to Blizzard Entertainment's bosses, the real higher ups. So with all that said, let's get going. Let's get into the Warcraft stuff. Okay, so first up, fixes and stuff. Uh, now that QA person who contact who got in contact with me, uh, you know, they were actually hunting down bugs with visions on their Saturday, probably their day off. And I just wanted to say that because it's clear that the staff there clearly do care. And if you have any vision specific bugs, uh, please do let me know either here on Twitter and if there's any egregious stuff, I will be passing it along to them. So fixes. Well, the vast majority of dailies that were plagued by low drop rates and spawn rates being a bit wild, they um, have had those like spawn rates and drop rates increased. Yep, even the rare quest. That is a fantastic step that will make it far more like you're going to a zone and doing the content of that zone and less like you are, say, you know, waiting and the timing of game systems. So that's good stuff. Next up on the vision front, Blizzard have clarified how gear works and they've actually hot fixed the main bugs with the system. Now I've also received clarification uh, regarding Titan forging, war forging, and sockets and tertiary stats. One that I think a lot of people might find a little bit surprising. So with the horrific visions, here are the gear system breakpoints, right? They're on the screen. If you complete a vision to those standards, those are the bits of gear that you'll get. Now that chart is clear or is, you know, there for your first completion at that level per week. 
If you complete a all objective run, you'll get a 445. If you repeat that, you'll get a 430. So yes, repeated clears at the same level of completeness, they will drop one level lower on the table you see in the screen right now. With that said, why were we reporting missing gear? Well, it turns out there was a bug, right? Where 430 item level gear stuff was not dropping. That is from a two objective run, which will have impacted most players. Blizzard have since fixed this bug. So if you do a two objective run and you didn't get loot, or did even, don't worry. From what I understand, your progress is actually recorded and you will receive the loot that you are due upon your next run. Now, past that, there have been some issues like people doing the first vision quest, uh, you know, with a vessel that they got from the Black Empire Assault instead of purchasing one from Rathian, and that's led to them missing out on cloak progress and basically wasting the vessels. Uh, that really is a bad situation from what I understand. It's just a hard line. They are not refunding vessels. Uh, they say that the catch-up uh, mitigates that, but, you know, the throttle cloak progression is something that actually is gameable by doing the bare minimum uh, for just your cloak upgrades and then stockpiling vessels until the later weeks that require more vision farming. So... That, you know, there's that, that kind of sucks. Uh, the core stuff of the visions actually is fixed though now. And I mean, thank God, they're great. Seriously, I love visions. Um, I'm really excited to start like actually pushing the envelope, you know, with how far I can go. I mean, look, there's still worries of, you know, the cloak and the tech tree trivializing the visions, but hopefully the masks will fix that. Uh, now, of course, one issue is that, you know, as great as the content is, it doesn't really last for that long and you only get a few entries per week. I think that's certainly a pity. I think this is some of the best content they've made in a long time. And we'll talk a little little bit more about that later. Next up, a clarification. So, Ian said at BlizzCon that sockets dropping um, on Benthic gear was a mistake. I believe that was the Bay and Preach interview. Uh, but, you know, once they shipped that mistake, they felt like they had to keep it live. Now, this led to the Benthic lottery. And based on that, and sockets being purchasable, you know, and there being no warforging and titanforging with corrupted gear, most of us assumed, therefore, that sockets would not drop on corrupted gear. But uh, seemingly from the clarification I've received, that is intended behavior. Sockets and tertiaries are on corrupted gear. Now, personally, I don't think that's ideal, given the purchasable sockets, but uh, that's what they're going for. Now, while I do intend to raid seriously, I'm not going to be playing around that fact. Um, I think that's a humongous mistake. I think many me uh, members of the raiding community will be quite miffed at that. I think they'll feel like their concerns have not been listened to. Um, I mean, certainly after the interview with uh, with Preach, with you know, Preach and Ian has a costus, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, a lot of people felt a little bit lied to or were just confused about it. So I actually suspect that this could be the intended behavior right now, that it could be an oversight, and that now that it's spread out, maybe that's something they'll try to shut down. But that said, much like with the Benthic gear, it could have shipped. It could be at the situation now where the cat's out of the bag and they're just going to let it live. Either way, that's the situation. That's that's all that I know. Okay, next up, server problems. I'm sure you've noticed a good amount of them. Blizzard seemed, though, to have solved them uh, with the weekend's emergency reset, at least at the EU, but it did come with a sort of unfortunate cost. Anyone in Visions or Mythic Plus runs? Uh, I mean, we saw the server notification a few minutes into our Mythic Plus run, which was kind of unfortunate. We got to, like, you know, a little bit into the final boss. We almost made it, but not quite. Certainly, it was a more hardcore time trial than we expected when we went into a Mythic Plus set. Seven. Certainly an unfortunate one. Uh, I mean, with the visions, like the wasted vessels are definitely a problem there. And Blizz CS, you know, they have been clear, as I said, that they will not be refunding them to players. They've talked about the catch up system, that meaning that it won't matter, which, I mean, technically speaking, isn't really true. It's not a great situation. I think we all know that. And with that said, I just want to move on to my experiences playing this patch. So, as for me, while well, I've been playing my new Demon Hunter, do you know what? I've been really enjoying the visions. I've been really enjoying Mythic Plus. Those things are just fun to do in a Demon Hunter. I mean, Demon Hunters, they're, uh, they're pretty strong. Uh, and, you know, I've actually enjoyed playing around with my corrupted gear. The balance is madness, absolutely. It's very unbalanced right now. But, you know, tinkering with corruption levels and working out a fun build, I've actually enjoyed that. Now, that said, I think it should be designed, you know, as a one-off system in theme with this patch. I don't think it should really carry through forever. Now, the zone bugs and the pacing were very annoying to me, uh, you know, especially doing the daily quests. I think that kind of sucked, and you did sort of need those for your essences, but with those things being ironed out, you know it's grand. I think the assaults and the dailies, they are standard as hell, inoffensive World of Warcraft world content. I would not play the game to do that stuff, but it's quick enough, so I'm fine doing it if it's in service of the bits of content that I like, such as visions. Of course, I don't think that's an ideal design, though, and yeah, it does seem like they're trying to squeeze a lot out of a little, and to be honest, given, you know, the schedules, I kind of can't blame them. Uh, lesser visions, they're strange. I mean, farming them's not ideal, but doing the daily in there is just so darn quick. I mean, it really does feel like Blizzard could have done more with the lesser vision feature. Uh, but really, for me, you know, it's all about doing the horrific visions, playing with my friends, especially Mythic Plus, and 
double especially, Niall Otha. That's just what I care about right now. If I wanted a more expansive, less pure gameplay oriented experience, then this patch would not be delivering that for me. I mean, you know, just, just look at the gear. There's barely any new transmog this time around. Like, the elite PvP is nearly identical to Heroic Nihilotha. Yeah, that pretty much means the art team is, you know, behind schedule, and they had to do that. I think anyone who was saying that this is all perfectly to plan, I think they're being willfully ignorant of what is very evident when you actually look at reality. And I'm not saying that as a dig at the World of Warcraft team. Times are tough, and, you know, I do empathize with that. And, uh, you know, it sucks that's the situation that they're in. And this is probably sort of the best they could have done with the time that they had. But still, I'm going to, like, empathize with them as much as I can, but at the same time, I've got to be real with you about how things are. So, my overall cons are that uh, visions are limited to the point where that feature doesn't shine as much as it could, I think essences will hold back alts, I think the world content's very plain, and past that, it's a patch that adds barely anything new, and the PvP gearing system still sucks because it's BFA. Uh, it's an unbalanced patch. Now, for me, visions and a raid and some mythic plus, that's enough for me to go casual, hardcore, caring about my performance on a single character. Alts don't make much sense to me right now, and if I was playing playing this game for most other reasons than what I said, I don't think this patch would have been really doing a lot for me. Uh, now, that said, yes, I have been playing the patch. I have been getting enjoyment from it. Just it does feel like more of a, you know, a 0.5 patch that happens to have a raid than a major World of Warcraft patch. And uh, I don't think it's going to have a massive amount of staying power. Certainly, the gameplay will not compete with the end of Legion experience. I think Blizzard could, though, make it far better. And because of that, I want to talk about ways that this could could be improved in a pretty quick, you know, not development intensive way. So, the bonus objectives for assaults, I think they should appear on the main map. I think that would give people the feeling of opening up the game, seeing their dailies, they look at the map, oh, they've got a whole bunch of content to go out and do that's in the world. I think that is an inherently satisfying thing, like quest stacking in an MMO. The current system just has people going to Wowhead. Uh, no offense to them, of course. Now, you might think this would take away from exploration, and I think it could, but to me, it depends on what you consider to be exploration. When a rare mob is a system, I don't think it's a rare mob anymore, it's just an entry in that system. So for me, it's similar here. I think there's just more of a player perception thing, though, and if I think back to Mechagon and Najatar, the team did eventually decide to mark things like the quests on the map, so I think that logic applies here. Next, vision access. You know what? It's simple. I wouldn't even mind a practice mode, almost like Proving Grounds, because it's inherently fun to do. I would like to do that for the fun of doing it, not even a reward. Past that, though, I think that this is a system that, uh, you know, just doesn't support people who enjoy it so much they want to do it more. I just wish there were ways to do more visions, and, you know, perhaps we could see that be added in the future. I think this is such a cool idea, a cool design. I love it, but, you know, we just don't have that much content within that system. So if they could squeeze out, I mean, you know, an 835 that just added a few more visions, a few more masks, that would be great. But I don't really think that ha will happen. And for now, I just wish Blizzard would add a way to let people do more. Next, account wide essences. Look, I've explained my reasons before. I'm going to keep this one real quick. First up, pragmatically, the last thing BFA needs is to give people reasons not to play it. Simple as. Second, I actually do disagree with Ian's logic. You know, I respectfully disagree with his logic when he said that they were off the table in a recent interview. He did say the player power is not account wide, but access to content is. Fair enough, but imagine in Legion if gold and artifact traits came from raiding, PvP, reps, and Mythic Plus. I think if that were the case, Legion alts would have been far less of a thing. I think one of Legion's strengths, especially at the end, was that people could roll an alt and they could experience the class-specific content, and right now I do feel like they're shooting themselves in the foot purely for philosophical reasons that just aren't in the player experience's favor. I mean, just for player engagement, I think this would be an improvement. And then next up, it's just doing a user experience pass on everything. And that's just making sure that spawn rates are working well, that fewer mobs are evading, putting some markers in the map, like I said. A lot of that stuff is done now, and the general experience of 8.3, you know, is better for it, but overall, that's what I'd say. Next up, I want to talk about lessons to be learned from this. So first up, communication. After the PTR was done, we basically didn't know how many of the main systems worked. Blizzard had not clarified gearing, they hadn't clarified uh, sockets, just a whole bunch of stuff. They literally never said. And that meant that players were just not really sure what to expect or what was going on. Even people, you know, writing guides weren't particularly sure what Blizzard's intent was with many different designs. Now, us not knowing that made it far harder to actually you know, publicly test the public test realm. And I think that was a major weakness in this patch cycle. 
it does seem like they are pretty starved of, you know, resources when it comes to the communication side of things. Uh, I think that's a department that's historically been quite understaffed. That's sure to be worse with the layoffs. So, um, I mean, that's just a tricky situation. If anyone in that department, you know, would like me to do some surveys for the audience or anything that would help you out in getting more stuff to the team, or, you know, if you'd like me to suggest stuff, just hit me up. Uh, you know, whatever can be done. I think we all need to work together and get the, uh, just get the communication in a better stage. I think it would lead to just, you know, less awkward situations going down and it would be for the good of the community and importantly for the community and developer relationship, which really is, I think, just king. It is the core thing that lets all of us work together to make this game that we love in a better state. And then past that, I think delaying for polish. And as I said in the other video, it really seems to me like all the devs would have known this was just not in a state to be released. But at the end of the day, they do have, you know, they've got their dates, they've got their deadlines. Ian has his deadline from his higher ups. And I don't think he's really going to be able to say, hey there, World of Warcraft producer, sorry, I've, I've forgotten his name. Could we delay this patch for three or four weeks? And I doubt he's going to be able to take that to his higher ups and say, hey, you know, president of company and Activision Blizzard execs, we've got to delay this, you know, decently major release. I just don't think that would happen. So that's really unfortunate, but I think this does highlight to everyone involved that polish is really important and that a delay probably should have happened. I think that this is a patch that most people have got an impression that it's worse than it is because of those really bad launch problems. I think that if this patch had have launched without those problems, you know, it still wouldn't be a, a great patch. It would be a very middling patch with some pros and some cons, but at least we would have clearly seen what the patch was intended to be rather than the messy situation we got at launch. And then just to wrap this video up, look, if you're somebody who is into the very broad experience of WoW, you love a new story, you, uh, you know, you want to dabble in a little bit of a dungeon, just run some LFR, you know, do some battle paths, stuff like that, there's probably like a month of gameplay in this. You know, like the pet battle stuff, you know, it's maybe not as much for me, but there's a lot of care and passion. And Ah, I for, I've forgotten the dev who works really hard in that stuff. Ah, I've forgotten his name, sorry. But, you know, they always do a great job in that. So, you know, there's maybe a month in that gameplay if that's what you're into. Uh, if you're somebody who's really into gameplay and, you know, you have got essences on a character, you want to play around with the corrupted gear, you want to do the new raid, I think there's maybe two, three months of gameplay in this patch for you. But, yeah, if you're someone who just broadly likes a little bit of all the things in WoW, I think this is an unbalanced patch and I don't think it's got a great value proposition to you. And certainly a six-month sub that comes with a free mount I don't think you'd be getting tremendous value from that purchase if that is what you were considering purchasing. So just to wrap this up, yeah, I mean, I think it's an unbalanced patch. I think that's the situation we're dealing with. As we look forward into the future with stuff like Shadowlands, I think it's fairly evident that right now that is behind schedule, you know, with 835 being cancelled. I think the developers are probably just doing their utmost to actually ship that expansion. And uh, I've got to imagine it's going to be down to the line uh, for them. Uh, what I would say is that if it's going to be a real rough situation getting that out there, then it's all about them being really responsive and being able to make sort of quick, smart, small decisions to remove small pain points. If Shadowlands is a slightly smaller than normal expansion, but it doesn't have, you know, more egregious design issues because the player base and the developers have been able to have a fantastic communication through the beta testing process, then I still actually think that Shadowlands could be a good platform for the rest of an expansion to roll out. But if Shadowlands is, you know, an expansion that has had its struggles, but also we get a BFA quality beta test, I think the game is really, it's going to be in a pickle. A very big, very deep, very bad pickle. Uh, so it's all about that communication. It's all about the testing process starting as early as is possible. Even if there's only one zone and half the classes, I don't care. I think they just need to get people in there, get them testing, and make sure that whatever Shadowlands is, it's got less bugs, it's got less, you know, just little design, you know, sort of quibbles that really tick people off. So that's it for me. Yeah, let me know what have your experiences been. If you've got any like bugs or stuff that you'd like to report, leave them down in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. Uh, you know, that is stuff that I will, you know, try to do as best I can to, uh, to pass on to people. So yeah, there's that. Thank you very much for watching this video. We will be back to the more regularly scheduled stuff. Trust me, there's... This last few days has sucked and I've not been particularly happy. I really actually hate making videos like this, but it's the sort of thing I feel like I gotta do. That said, the rest of the Vanilla Complete History series, pretty much done. We'll be getting that out soon. We've got some really fun new lore videos, Space Goats, Mediv, real good stuff. And uh, we've got another sort of little secret series that we're uh, trying to get in the next two months. So a lot of good stuff going on. I just can't wait to get back to the regular coverage and uh, to sort of be, you know, done with this uh, messy period of time. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.